and a jolly good morning on this uh, chilly spring morning here in Hertfordshire, on the Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire border at uh, Knocking Ho Nature Reserve. Oh, I'm just very close to it and uh, today I'm going to go on a nice walk that uh, you might like to consider at some point. Uh, you can get to here, you can't drive directly to Knocking Ho Nature Reserve because it's at the top of a hill but you can either go to the Hitchin Barton Road just over there and park your car in a car park just over there or my preference would actually be to park in the village of Purton and walk up Wood Lane which is the path you can see there now um, <clears throat> if you park in Purton there's a couple of pubs and a shop to uh, have pre, post or both uh, refreshments uh, before you set off up here or afterwards um, plus it's a nice little village to look around to once you get up here or it, the other place you could park would be Pegston itself because this walk is going to be a walk from here knocking Ho over to Deacon Hill, Pegston Hills down to the village of Pegston and then back up to this point where I'll return back to my car. Uh, of course you could start this walk in Pegston itself, there's a pub there too. Uh, it's recently been refurbished and taken over and completely changed so I can't really give you a clue as to how good it is. But they appear to uh, sell all the usual things a pub would sell, teas and coffees as well and food. So possibly worth popping in there but I've not actually been in there myself since it was uh, taken over and uh, redone. Anyway this is uh, Knocking Knoll or Knocking Ho Nature Reserve. Morning. Uh, which is a great place to come with a picnic or bring the kids for a run around quite a lot of wildlife to see and uh, yeah it's a good place to start or finish any walk anyway I'm gonna head off this way which is not the quick way to Pegston this is most definitely the long way to Pegston and we'll take this path which is a continuation of Wood Lane we're at the top of uh, Knocking Knoll now uh, Tingley Wood uh, for those that want to Google Google map as I say, there's a, a car park down on the uh, Hitchin to Barton the Clay Road. So if you find that on Google Maps, we'll put in Pegston, you'll certainly see Pegston. And you'll find your way from there, no problem. It's early, it's early spring. I've still got the remnants of autumn's leaf fall here. It's about four or five Celsius at the moment. And it's a nice crisp day to have a walk. Particularly nice to come here during the week. It's quite quiet. You'll see the odd, uh, odd person walking their dog. I wouldn't say it ever gets busy here, but certainly at the weekends. Uh, come across a lot more people and uh, it's quite popular with uh, people on mountain bikes as well, cyclists. Which is worth, worth bearing in mind. Yeah, so get out of the town and uh, come out for a walk in the countryside. This is right on the Hertfordshire and Bedfordshire border nearest places to here, our main town will be Hitchin. There's also the large village of Barton the Clay. And uh, the small village of Pegston, which we will walk through a little bit later on. In terms of difficulty, it's not really that difficult at all. So there is quite a steep hill up to the top of uh, Deacon Hill which uh, 
you can see now, you need to, you know, need to have a reasonable set of walking shoes on and uh, be able to negotiate that hill that you can just see through the trees there, which is fairly steep, but it is doable for most people. Uh, another way of finding this on uh, on a map would be to put in the uh, Trick Pillar, Deacon Hill Trick Pillar, you should find it. I, I don't know the number of it uh, on the Ordnance Survey maps uh, just off the top of my head, but once we get there I'll, I'll put it on the screen so you can, you can see. It's early March and uh, it's been a pretty dry winter here in England and I think for a lot of places in England, uh, particularly the south of England, it was the driest February since, oh I don't know, 1957 I think they said and it hasn't rained very much. Uh, it was quite rainy a few days ago uh, but the, the ground is uh, the ground is still very, very dry, even though there was uh, quite a lot of rain for a day or two. So it soaks it up quite quickly. Another, uh, another example of climate change, I guess. This walk should take, uh, well we'll see but at the end, but I would I'd estimate at an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, depends how, how long uh, you stop for on the way. There's a few places where you can sit, uh, uh, either sit on the ground or there's some seats in one or two places. Nice places to just sit and watch the red kites flying around. Yeah. <clears throat> in, the, in the warmer months, the butterflies. It's uh, quite a quite a range of unique flora and fauna on these chalk hills, which um, are part of the Chiltern Hills. And if you like butterflies and red kites in particular, uh, then. Here's a great place to come and see them. If you're really lucky, you might see some muntjac deer hiding about in, in the woods. Such timid little creatures, though they uh, tend to run off before before you even know they're there. But if you come up, particularly first thing in the morning, they're quite often out on the path foraging. reasonably close to them. As soon as they notice you're there, they're off. Just go up to the first crossing of uh, the Hitchin to Barton Road. It's quite a busy road, so take care crossing this one. Cars do uh, do come along here at 60 miles an hour, and uh, you know, particularly if you've got the kids with you. Tell you can tell when you're getting near to a road. litter that gets thrown. This is a, another tiny little lay-by that seems to attract people coming along in their cars or vans and uh, dumping their rubbish uh, like that. Fortunately on this walk we won't see too much more of that disgusting behaviour. But, uh, it's 
someone's old sofa by the looks of it or it's some sort of seat and uh, yeah let's just dump it in a hedge why not and as you can see in there lots of uh, general rubbish people come and park up here at night and smoke funky cigarettes and stuff like that so it's probably not a surprise it's like this it's a shame but there you go that's what happens to beauty spots next to main roads anyway I won't dwell on that too much this is the pitching that way Barton McClay that way Pegston would be that way or so if we were driving how difficult it was to do that with a camera in one hand. Going back to the littering, obviously you've got fly tippers like that. People just think it's acceptable to throw stuff out of car windows in laybys and so on. Um, but once you get away from areas like that, I tend to find that the litter gets less and less further up paths you get and um, I guess it's uh, littering and throwing rubbish out of car windows or even if you're walking and throwing litter it's a sign of laziness if nothing else disrespect for the environment and other people uh, also but uh, so I don't want to turn this into some sort of littering rant um, but I do find the further away you get from the starting point of a public footpath, the less litter there is. Because, uh, let's face it, it is, uh, littering is just something that lazy people do. And lazy people probably don't go on walks down public footpaths. Let me know what you think on that. I just... Uh, Obviously less and less people go, the further you go, there'll be less people that go that far. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Deacon Hill. And uh, just as we walk across this particular field, which was full of sheep and lambs the other day, little baby lambs, and, uh, they appear to have all been moved somewhere else. people out this morning. I can see a couple up there on, walking back in this general direction. <clears throat> Once you get the furthest reaches of this walk, which I'll uh, mention when we get to it, uh, you even though we are so close to towns and villages, Luton Airport's not very far in that direction. <clears throat> it does feel like you're almost in quite a remote place, which of course you're not. We're in the middle of uh, southern England, surrounded by quite big towns and cities, so it's nice to be able to walk out to places like this and at least feel like you've gone somewhere reasonably remote. The bonus of course to places like this is uh, you, um, it's, it's not too far to get to them. Hitchin's always a nice town to come and visit you're a tourist and I want to get out of the big cities, uh, London, Cambridge and so on. Hitchens are always worth a visit, you can get there by train, National Express coach, drive of course. Some interesting shops, Google Hitchin, and you'll see, apart from the few main chains that you get in any town there's not too many of those really it's pretty much independent shops and a market a few interesting cafes and restaurants too so 
well worthy of a, a day out. And if you're not a tourist and you just live fairly close by the southern part of England, in your car one day, or on the bus, it's pretty well connected to most places. And, uh, come and visit. Uh, as you can probably tell by my panting slightly, it's uh, a little bit steeper than it looks on the camera. This bit is the steepest bit, and uh, anyone with mobility issues probably wouldn't uh, manage this particularly well, if at all. But you can kind of walk around the base of Deacon Hill by going over that way. Still fairly steep, but not. Not as steep as uh, the way I'm going to go now. <clears throat> this is, uh, if you've got a small toboggan, and on the rare occasions we actually get a decent amount of snow in this part of England, this is a good place to come. And, uh, if you, uh, if you careful and head that way rather than that way, you won't end up in a fence, barbed wire fence, or at least learn how to stop it before you get to the fence. You can get a fair lick coming down this hill on a snowy day. I think we probably had two days this winter winter that's just gone, 22, 2022 and 23, there would have been sufficient snow to put uh, them down here, sledge down. <clears throat> Alternatively you can get uh, tarpaulin and uh, I think you know what I mean, I can't, it's hard to describe what you do, but you basically sit on the top, pull it up in front of you and slide down that way. It's uh, certainly, certainly steep enough for that, but you need, uh, you need a few layers and you can your pants to avoid the bruising. So, Oh, more or less at the top now. So just to give you a geographical, just over there, that's Hitchin. The village of Purton and where we started the walk is just over those, uh, the woods over there. Purton's about two miles from here. We've walked approximately a mile, I'd say, from Ho Nature Reserve. Over in that general direction would be Luton, Luton Airport. On a clear day you can see the planes flying in over Stevenage, coming into land, can't see anything this morning. Clouds a bit low. But yeah, they are quite a long way away. Quite often you come across a lot of sheep up here sheltering in these uh, this old uh, workings uh, we used to take out chalk. I wouldn't call it a chalk mine but uh, I suppose it sort of is. <clears throat> the sheep like these little dips. Right, so we're now at the top of Deacon Hill. And as such, there is the uh, trick pillar. For those of you that uh, are not familiar with trick pillars, give them a Google and uh, find out what they're all about. 
but you will find a lot of these over Britain. And this particular trick, pi pi <sighs> trick pillar is that there. If you wish to, uh, if you Google that, then it will bring up the relevant information where it is, it's elevation above sea level, how to get to it, so on and so forth. So, once you're up here, there's uh, two ways um, that you can take to get to Pegston Village. Um, now, I just mentioned back there about taking uh, a slightly less hilly route round the base of, of Deacon Hill. That'll bring you out over there. And then, of course, you've got to walk down this fairly steep hill over towards the see it through the tree branch there there's a, a water trough and a stile a bit further along and you can walk along those trees and through the next field towards the village of Pegston over there and uh, just see the right building right in the middle that's, that's the pub and the car park there quickest way to get to it from here right now would be to walk down the hill here avoiding all the rabbit holes and so on that you could uh, twist your ankle on in on on um, and uh, but uh, I'm, I'm going to be taking the, the longer route which takes you around this uh, these workings over here as well quite interesting. It's a great place for kids to explore actually. Once you get over there, they can run around in the woods, find lots of things in there. So, I've deviated slightly off the path there. It's not, not really a much of a defined path, but you can just about see uh, amounts to being the, the path to where we're going. This actually connects up with uh, when I mentioned the car park on the Hitchin to Barton Road. That was uh, part of the Hickney Way. Kind of leads to that, although I won't be going on to it, uh, and that leads you off over to well, ultimately to well, that part of it towards uh, Lee Grave in Luton. Although you do come across actual roads, but anyway, that's uh, that's on a map if you want to look it up. There's an, another walking route across the top towards Lee Grave. <coughs> which is a famous or historical old uh, route across England. I can't remember where it actually starts and finishes but I think it's something along the lines of uh, somewhere out on the east coast like Norfolk or somewhere in Norfolk uh, and uh, finishes in Wiltshire I think. I should have done better homework on it actually, I was going to mention it, but I didn't realise I was going to mention it. Could be quite sheltered just along this, this bit. It's quite a nice place to stop for a, if you've got a flask with you or a, a little bit of a picnic or something. Here would be a good place to stop if you, if you, if you sit up on, back up there on Deacon Hill. It's quite blowy up there. Even on a fairly calm day, it's quite windy. But just down here, you, you tend to be quite sheltered. Uh, and it's quite a good place for the kids to run around if you bring those, if bring them with you, or your dog. Always used to be a, a rope tied to the tree with a, you know, a, a 
branch attached to the rope. So the rope swing over the years, it's come and gone. Oh, I can see the rope. Looking a bit bedraggled today. It's quite, oh no, it's got, it has got a piece of wood attached to it. It's spun around there. Yeah, so. Again. Fun swinging around on that. Yeah, last time I came up here, the, uh, it was either no wood at all or some little piece. But uh, if there's something to put a bigger bit on there, then I have to think we've changed the rope. Yeah. Yeah, here's a good place to set up camp for a little while. I still hear the noise of the traffic down there on the Barton Road, but it is getting gradually quieter. And if you're walking alone, pop on some music. You can be in your own little world for a while. So, so far from Knocking Ho Nature Reserve to here, it's taken about 26 minutes. Walked up from, say, Perth, you could add, I suppose, another 20 25 minutes onto that from the car park on the hitch into Barton Road. Um, 10 minutes tops to get to that starting point. Remember to shut these gates, everybody. difference to taking the low route there other than to go and sit on that seat which is quite nice or taking the high route here ultimately you end up in the same place the nicest time to come up and hear the planes from Luton Airport now, just the roar of an aircraft engine in the distance there. I think the nicest time to come up here by far is uh, late spring, early summer. As I say, this is uh, very early spring, March, and uh, still a bit on the chilly side. Any, any animals yet? There's uh, quite often ponies up here as well. I don't know if they take them indoors during the winter time and they haven't brought them back out again. But uh, yeah, the ponies will come over and say hello. Can't see anything. And uh, some cattle as well, quite often more sheep. Not a lot around at the moment. and it's starting to spit with rain slightly as well. Really is dry, considering it's the end of winter. Quite often I've come across here in winter time when we've had a lot of rain and it's a very, very slippy along this path. It doesn't look like it would be, but it really is. It's, uh, it's um, 
I don't know what it is with the soil in these parts, but it seems to be very, very slippy when wet. Slippery when wet. That would be a good name for an album. <laughs> so no, no need to comment on that. <clears throat> Amazing how sound travels so far when you're high up like this, and there's not much wind to uh, you know block out the sound whistling around your ears and so on. I've just heard a train toot its horn, and uh, the the main line where that train was is at least five miles away from here. five miles away I heard that quite clearly might have come out on the camera on the, you know, on the sound here I don't know but I certainly heard it clearly enough this is where you've got a couple of options again on this walk neither of which I'm going to take but, so when you get just to the top here um, again this is quite a nice place to to sit and a uh, cup of coffee or something. Nice little flat area, nice views to look at. You can, you can't actually see it from here, but you can walk over the edge of the, the hill just over there and the path leads you down a slightly quicker way. Uh, back down to Pegston. I find that's much more pleasant coming down this way, however. It's uh, cutting Yeah, very little wildlife around at the moment. Let's try this in. Later on, later spring, in, into May, April time. A lot more animals to see up there. This, this gets... <laughs> Incredibly slippy as well when it's been raining heavily. It slipped off down the hill before there. I, don't, I know it doesn't seem possible just looking at it, but it's. Uh, oh, there's some sheep down there. Right, so, so we've gone from uh, Beacon Hill to Paxton Hills now. So, useful sign there, just letting you know what's going on. Now, when I mention the Ignild Way, that over there is where it uh, intersects with where we are now so if you did park at the car park on the Hitchin Barton Road and walked up uh, the path that begins there this this is uh, a point where you could come out or indeed you could take this walk and then go through that gate turn left and uh, go back down to your car down that way 
that'll be a shorter walk, a lot shorter. The alternative, of course, is to continue where I'm going now, down to Pegston, back up to Knocking Ho Nature Reserve, with or without a stop at the pub. And, uh, Back down to Curtin. Or indeed, if you actually started off in Pegston itself, that's the end of your walk. So, hard way around. It's a nice walk where you can start, tailor it a little bit to kind of the uh, end of the walk that you'd like to do. from the hills is starting to get the wind blowing again. <clears throat> there's, a, there's another nice place where you can just forgot about that. You can just go through this this cake here. Nice seat to sit on there. Lovely views. Quite often to see the red kites flying around using the upward draft in this uh, this area here for little mammals to catch I guess and uh, have for lunch. I don't know the breed of um, sheep that they, they keep up here but they're different to the normal woolly sheep that you see. Uh, the ones that are quite timid and run away. These ones are quite, quite friendly and uh, Inquisitive and come up, they're not, they don't seem, they don't seem to run away, they'll uh, just uh, come up and have a good look at you. Bedfordshire. I uh, can't really see it today, but you, oh, I can just see it. I don't know if it's coming out on the camera. Yeah, it's not really coming out, I don't think, but uh, I can see it with the naked eye. Uh, Sandy Heath transmitter. So, Sandy in Bedfordshire over there, Sandy Heath. Start walking down again now. It's a general downward walk back to Pegston Hills. Um, Pegston Village, I should say. Again, this 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 is quite incredible how how dry this is actually for the time of year. But again, this can be absolutely treacherous. I've had to like cling on to tree branches along here to stop from uh, sliding sliding off down into the brambles. It's, uh, it's quite incredible how slippy this gets. But not this year. Telegraph Hill from there, and uh, great views again. Similar to this in a way. Not 
uh, not quite so far to walk because you can park a lot closer in the village itself. And of course Barton, Barton Clay's got an array of uh, shops, pubs and so on that you can take advantage of. This little bit going down the hill attacks my knees. My knees not being as young as they used to be, of course. There's not many people about today. There's a guy with his dog now. Pretty typical. This is a uh, Friday morning. So, uh, pretty typical. Uh, tend to come across too many people. I'm going to be a little bit over the hour doing this walk. I'm not really hurrying. If you if you wanted to uh, do an energetic power walk, or so to speak, or or get your head down and not stop looking at anything on the way, then you could do it, do it under an hour. It's a reasonably good good bit of exercise as well. <clears throat> Red kites seem to be a bit. They fly somewhere in winter. I thought I saw one earlier on, but there's not many around. You usually see quite a few actually hovering about. from here but uh, just uh, behind those bushes I Here's a sign showing you the livestock you are likely to see while up here. majority of this walk has been in Bedfordshire and uh, a fair proportion of it literally on the Hertfordshire and Bedfordshire border. Uh, the, the line of the border is was along part of the walk there, back there. And we look on a map. I 
some of the some of the village roads you go down around here you go in and out of uh, the counties multiple times in the space of a few miles it's it's not like states of america with straight lines in all directions going to define the borders of states or, or counties even but the, the county lines here are, uh, very higgledy piggledy Lots of sheep around here recently looking at the ground. The rabbits as well, there's a couple of rabbits up here. Again, they really seem to be hiding away today. It's not that cold either. It's a fairly chilly day, but it's not. Uh, cattle around here as well. I get the little messages left about the place so oh yeah I can see uh, see some cows down there. Uh, spring 2023 so of course three years ago spring 2020 is when the dreaded coronavirus kicked off and I think it was about the middle of March so we're almost got to three years ago when lockdown occurred and I remember coming up here uh, it was during that period of time where you weren't allowed to go out, you could only go to the chemists or go out to buy food. Um, and the, the official instruction, I think, was something along the lines of you could go out, out on your own or... I can't really remember now, but it's something along the lines of you could go out on your own for exercise for 30 minutes. That, that kind of uh, level of lockdown. And after a, after a few weeks, it was relaxed a little bit. And it was a bank holiday Monday, so probably May Day bank holiday, or the April, possibly the April Easter bank holidays. So I'm actually thinking about it. A few weeks later, anyway. And, uh, I came up. I was up the top there, and I've never seen so many people up there in all my life. Uh, completely. Um, not dressed appropriately for the terrain and the condi weather conditions. But there were a lot of people, it, it almost like a, a coach tour had turned up to show them some random piece of, of uh, British English countryside. And the, the People clearly have not really gone out for walks in the countryside ever, either ever before or not very often, not for a very long time because they, were, they looked surprised that the place even existed. It was, uh, it was quite surreal, I find it difficult to, to, to really explain it adequately how, how it, it seemed, but I arrived there with my usual 
walking gear, walking shoes. And there were people uh, sort of tottering around in platform shoes and the kind of clothes you would wear to go to the shops in, not to go out for a walk in the hills. But nothing was open. All the shops were shut, all the pubs were shut, all the shopping malls were shut. It was just the odd places open, take away food if you remember, uh, chemists and uh, convenience stores and things like that. That was about it. And um, so people didn't have anything to do, so they, they suddenly discovered this thing called the countryside. And uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was quite interesting. And um, from, well, from a few weeks after that, when, when uh, lockdown was eased a little bit, and a few more shops started to open, I've not really seen anybody up here again since then, so other than the usual people that you would expect to see. So I, I did find that quite amusing. Um, I can't believe that that's now three, almost three years ago. Maybe there was a coach tour arrived somewhere, but uh, given it was during the beginnings of the lockdown, suspect it was just a coincidence that a lot of people all turned up at once. I'm not really sure where they would have parked actually assuming they'd driven. I, I'll say probably down here in Pegston and walked up, up to the top. But it was interesting, interesting times. I know a lot of uh, a lot of my friends from overseas find it quite amazing that in Britain we've got the public footpath system across farmers' land and, and private land uh, the way we have because you go to some countries uh, in Europe and uh, you know it just feels like there's nowhere you can walk other than along the road. Nowhere seems accessible with um, walking trails and walking paths apart from ones that officially, you know, in, in, part, in national parks and, and things like that. Yeah, we're back to the. Oh, hello. <laughs> Not quite so timid these ones. Back to the Barton Hitchin Barton Road again, where we're gonna cross over. Go through the past the pub here. It used to be called the Live and Let Live. And it's changed its name and for the life of me, right this second I can't remember what it's called, but we'll the view you get from the, the pub. A similar view to that, just uh, you can sit outside on a nice day looking across to the Pegston Hills. It really is rather pleasant. There's not much in Pegston other than the pub. There's no shop that I'm aware of. Just a, just a, a row of houses and a pub. Probably a better alternative would be to start off in Purton, where there is a shop, or at the car park and use the pub here as a little place to have a, a break halfway around. Ooh. Oh no, it's what we've got the gate to fall in there. really must make sure all these gates are shut properly go through them because the sheep have been known to get out get onto the road which is not a good thing for anybody especially the sheep this is the only part of the walk where you really actually walk along the road oh yeah the pub's now called the view which is uh, pretty, 
appropriate given the view it's got, which is rather pleasant. Looks quite rather swish now. I think quite a lot of money's been spent doing it up. Previously, when it was the Live and Let Live, it did get rather run down into the ground and, well, let's just say got mixed reviews on, on TripAdvisor. But uh, obviously it's, uh, it's got a completely new start now, so I won't dwell on that because different owners, different management, and uh, a different experience altogether, I'm sure. Though I've not been in here. Last time I went in, it was the Live and Let Live, and uh, there you go, coffee. Three pounds for coffee. Pretty standard. Some accommodation here as well. used to be advertised on things like booking.com presumably still is there's an awful lot of signs saying the view customer parking only CCTV cameras yeah. a lot of people used to use this car park, car park for uh, um, starting uh, to, to, well to use to uh, as a beginning point for their walk but really, there's no need because you can just park on the road here. I've never had trouble parking here. And uh, seems, a bit, seems slightly over the top with all that signage. Because I can't see that uh, it's quite a big car park. I can't imagine that a few walkers parking their car in there is going to pose too much of a problem for them. This is, the, this is uh, nine o'clock in the morning, by the way, so the pub's not even open yet, which is why it's so deserted there. But uh, sometimes having a car park that other people want to use for other things, could uh, you could try and use to your advantage to encourage people to come into your premises, not put them off in the first place by having too much signage and signs threatening you with getting wheel clamped and so on and so forth. You know, can't imagine that car park's ever full up. Maybe on a Sunday lunchtime. Uh, all right, so we can carry on now, getting away from the, the main road again, continuing on the footpath and heading back up towards... Don't be put off by this private road sign either. I know I've seen people coming along here thinking, oh, can't go down here. Well, yes, you can. It's a public footpath. It is a private road and it leads to a farm. And once you get down here, there will be a sign which clearly states uh, that you shouldn't go any further along this road towards the farm. The walk takes you, as you'll see shortly, back up the hill towards uh, Knocking Ho Nature Reserve. It is clearly marked, so you can't really go wrong. Again, it's uh, for me. It's slightly, uh, slightly over the aggressive signage. But then again, I suppose if people have uh, strayed onto places they shouldn't have done and, uh, and upset the inhabitants of the farm, then I guess it's understandable. It would be quite easy, actually, to carry on on this private road towards the farm when in fact there's nothing there apart from the farm. If, uh, <clears throat> can't really see it from here but if you, when, once we walked out of the pub car park took a left turn then a right turn it, that's uh, a road that takes you from Pegston down to the village of Shillington which is uh, quite a pleasant village to have a look around as well. 
once again the usual amenities that uh, most English villages have. A couple of shops, massive church, um, it's quite impressive at night time when they light it up. And uh, two pubs, three pubs, there's a few pubs there. Deacon Hill again. It's quite small from here. It doesn't seem quite so small when you're walking up it. It's lovely in summer when these fields are full of wheat late summer when the combine harvesters are out. There's this sign along here, funnily enough, I've not seen it for a while, I might, maybe I'm thinking of somewhere else, but in the general parts there used to be a sign saying the wheat grown here is exclusively grown for Weetabix, which uh, I guess is a good business for the farmer. Well, but, uh, so the next time you're eating your Weetabix, it might have uh, originated in this field here or one nearby. Of course, a lot of the straw uh, was taken to Luton from here and turned into straw hats or boaters, which is why Luton used to be a, a hat making town. Hats of all, all sorts, shapes and sizes, not just straw hats, but they certainly made straw boaters. And uh, that's why the football team's nickname is the Hatters. In the, uh, in the village school in Purton, there's, uh, there's like a little uh, history of them. Uh, Photographs of them collecting the straw and making, uh, making little things out of straw, presumably to sell to, to people, but it's uh, again quite interesting. There's a history of all of that in the, in the library or in, the, in the, <coughs> uh, the museum, I should say, in Hitchin. The museum used to be at the library, but I think it's two separate places now. Yeah, it's all very, all very grey looking really in some respects this time of year because the uh, fields are quite green over there. Right, this is where you need to turn off, otherwise you will suffer the, the wrath of the farmer, I guess. There's nothing to go and find or do down there anyway, unless you actually are going to the farm for some reason. But it's quite clear, private road. At this point onwards, no cyclists, no walkers. And a sign clearly showing you public footpath up this way. Again, this, uh, this bit of path here is absolutely treacherous. Uh, well, treacherous is probably over egging it slightly but certainly really slippy and muddy on, on uh, wet winters during the wet winters but again it's really quite dry now considering it's just the end of winter beginning of spring well, you kind of have a choice here at the top of this bit where the steps are you can either carry on up the steps or go left uh, and it's just a steep hill back up to the top of Knocking Ho. One of uh, I used to do running around here, something that I've sort of retired from really. Nowadays, I used to 
tend to take the left turn rather than try to run up these steps. One, because they weren't in particularly good condition. And they were just at a slightly awkward distance apart for running. Now they've been repaired now, as you can maybe see, they're in much better condition than they used to be. But just the gap between each step is just not quite conducive for running, or at least with my the steps, size steps I use. But for walking up, it's fine. Oh, that someone's put another rope swing there. <laughs> what we used to do before the internet. <laughs> before the days when your mum and your mum would say come back when you're hungry or when it's gone dark, whichever's the soonest. No texting back then. is also quite uneven and not the best for running on. I've tripped up a few times coming up here. <clears throat> Great place to collect cones if you're one of those that likes to make decorative arrangements with cones. Spray them with silver or whatever for Christmas and good place to pick some up here. Anyone that's ever tried geocaching, there's a few round here. I've been up here with my, my sons a couple of times doing that. I presume geocaching is still a thing. I've not really heard about it much recently. But it was great fun hunting out little Surprises buried here and there or under logs or whatever. The uh, very white colour of the soil up here because of the chalk content in there. And it's been freshly ploughed, there's usually some quite hefty chunks of chalk that you can pick up. Kids love to take that back and scrawl all over your paths or walls at home. Outside I mean. row of trees up there is uh, part of Wood Lane. The original, the beginning of this walk uh, where we left Knocking Ho Nature Reserve and walked towards the Barton, Hitchin Barton Road which is just over there uh, through the woods. And that's there so we're running parallel to that now. I believe the sun has come out over there.
got nothing particularly spectacular on my feet to walk in for this. Rather muddy looking pair of light walking shoes. I'd certainly do the trick for walks like this. Uh, as I say, there are certain parts of this walk that are pretty, can get pretty slippy and muddy during the uh, middle of winter if there's been lots of rain but this year uh, certainly since January through to March there's been virtually no rain at all and it's very very dry but this is England and this year next year could be completely different next week could be completely different so just bear that in mind I wouldn't walk with Wellingtons on though I don't think it quite needs that a decent pair of reasonably waterproof walking shoes and uh, yeah I wouldn't bother with flip-flops or uh, flat platform shoes that's the that's the farm you would end up at if you carried on with that side so, uh, I just guess they don't want people just straying off down into there for no real reason Very pleasant walk, um, we're up to, up to about one hour and ten minutes I think so far. I can't, <laughs> can't quite see on the screen because the wind's blowing around my eyes a little bit and uh, causing them to tear up slightly. <clears throat> but I think if I'd if I'd not been holding a camera and not been talking and not been stopping to point things out then I, it's certainly doable in an hour if you move fairly rapidly or if you'd like a more leisurely stroll take two hours take three hours take all day it doesn't matter does it but uh, if uh, time is short and then of course you'd have to add on the time from where you park your car if you've come that way. Or where you've uh, cycled to. You could of course cycle to somewhere like Perton. I wouldn't leave your bicycle at the car park on the, on the uh, hitch into Barton Road. There is, a, there is a, a fence there that you could chain it up to but you're probably running a risk of getting it pinched. I know there's been a few problems with cars getting broken into there as well like for the years and there used to be a sign actually warning you of, of it being a hot spot for that sort of thing which is a shame so where my, my um, personal preference if I was to drive to go on this walk would be to park in Purton and take the 20 or so minutes walk up from there and then back again afterwards obviously or park in Pegston where you've just seen plenty of places to park along the road. There's a pub there uh, before or after. Car park on the edge into Barton Road is, uh, yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of a reputation of uh, things happening that shouldn't do. It's almost it now. It's, um, this is a view of the Knocking Ho Nature Reserve from halfway up. You can walk all the way across there, uh, right away to that mound, sit on the top of the mound there. You can just see behind the trees. It's quite pleasant actually sitting over there. 
that's uh, I mean that in itself is a nice little walk if you're parked in somewhere like Purton let's walk up to the top here into the nature reserve walk back again Amazing how quickly all this will spring into life fairly soon. All these trees will suddenly have buds and leaves on them. And all this grass here will be six foot high. Nettles. And that's really it so hope you enjoyed this little walk get out enjoy the fresh air wait for the car fumes and noise of the city and the towns So remember to respect the environment, take away your litter with you. And uh, when you're in the fields where the sheep are, keep your dogs on a lead. And uh, everyone will be happy. Wow, right, back to the beginning. Hope you enjoyed the walk. from down above looks like the sun may come out shortly have a nice day have a nice walk bye for now